right, so we're going to begin with um, these particular five parts and put them out there. We're going to recite this five times and then we're going to be going into these. This is the parts we'll be using for this week, practicing. So we can say this five times out loud. Large intestine, small intestine, stomach, feces, brain. 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 So we have saying it verbally now, repeating it mentally, silently, this five times as well. So we're going to be going into these particular parts now, and of course we're following this uh, way that is suggested in the practice of these um, sevenfold skills in learning. First, learning it orally, then repeating it mentally and silently, then going into the color, the shape, the direction, the location, the delimitation, what it's bordered by. And I'll also be offering, offering the definition of the particular part in its function. And as we sense into each of these parts, sensing in what might be arising physically, mentally, emotionally. Of course, there may be different uh, things that come up relating to our own personal lives or perhaps those of others that we know that have been, uh, have had some types of challenges with any of these internal organs. So now we'll just go into the large intestine. And the color is white. And its shape is like an upside down U. Its direction is found both above and below the waist. It's located in the abdomen. And it's bordered by the small intestine, the abdomen, the digestive organs in the back. Even though it's called the large intestine, it's, it's a five foot long canal. And it connects from the end of the small intestine to the anus. It is the last part of the digestive system. There are three parts to the large intestine, the transverse, the ascending, and descending colon. The function of the large intestine is that it takes, uh, it it's, uh, works with the processes uh, of the remaining, to finish up the remaining processes of the digestive system actually takes around 32 hour, hours to absorb uh, the remaining um, products within the, the digestive system. The large intestine absorbs vitamins that are created by the bacteria inhabiting the colon. It also absorbs water, compacts feces, stores fecal matter in the rectum until it's eliminated through the anus. Large intestine. So sensing in, you're welcome even to place your hand in the lower part of your abdomen and sense there is indeed a large intestine in there and just sensing into that this place and being mindful of what it evokes mentally emotionally physically of course as we do this practice you've heard kind of more of the non-personal aspects of it this is what its definition is this is what its function and then there's, of course, our narrative and our stories that may intermingle with this as well. So this practice is bringing up both the personal and the impersonal. It's all here. So sensing into the large intestine, being present.
into the large intestine, just sensing in into the abdomen, large intestine. And so yes, at times the mind may wander off and once you recognize it, kindly bringing it back into the belly, to the large intestine, this five foot long canal in the abdomen. And so we're going to gently shift into the small intestine. I just want to check. I have this some loud background sound, so I've worked with the audio. You can still hear me. Is that okay? Thumbs up. Okay, good. So we go into the large intestine, the small intestine, which is actually not so small, but when it's referred to large and small, it's looking at the diameter of each of these organs. And the large colon or intestine is much, have a, a wider uh, diameter than the small intestine. The small intestine's color is white and it's uh, like a very long, shaped like a very long coiled, almost like a snake, just coiled in the abdomen. It's got to be coiled because it's actually a 33 foot long canal. It's found both above and below the waist, located in the abdomen, bordering the large intestine, the digestive organs in the back. As mentioned, uh, this definition is a 33 foot long canal from the duodenum to the large intestine. The function of the small intestine of eggs aids in the breakdown and digestion of solid and liquid foods and allowing nutrients to pass into the bloodstream. 
So after the workings of the, of the food being digested, it's very amazing. This is why it's so long, 33 feet. And it allows the nutrients from the foods, the liquid, solid foods that we eat, allowing these nutrients to enter into the bloodstream to feed and nurture the body. To perhaps grow more head hair, body hair, nails, teeth, and skin. Small intestine. So we're really getting into the guts. And then you may have your own kind of judgments about this or that, but this is just what it does. Aids in the breakdown and digestion of solid and liquid foods, allowing nutrients to pass in the bloodstream, small intestine. Again, the personal may arise, but there's also the impersonal, the selfless nature of this body. Small intestine. Just to hang with this small intestine, and again, whatever it evokes as you sense into your belly. As you sense into it physically, what perhaps may evoke, arise mentally, emotionally, acknowledging what's present. Small intestine.
which is gently shifting from the small intestine to the stomach. The color of the stomach is actually clear and uh, the color is reflected on the food contents of what you've eaten. So if you had like um, like a nice big green salad tonight, you'd, you'd stomach would probably look green. You ate a lot of red spaghetti sauce, it looked red. The shape is a J-shaped pouch. The direction found above the waist. The stomach is located in the upper left of the abdomen between the esophagus and the small intestine. It's bordered by other digestive organs, the elimination organs in the back. The stomach is a muscular organ that is a sac-like pouch where the food is deposited via the esophagus. So eating the food and traveling down the esophagus, landing in the stomach. In humans, the stomach has a relaxed and near empty volume that can expand to hold up to about one quart of food. Though depending on consumption, it can hold as much as one and a half quarts. Once the food is in the stomach, gastric juices, hydrochloric acid, break it down for about three to four hours. And then it's turned into a cream-like liquid called chyme, which is later moved into the small intestine. The stomach produces a new layer of mucus every two weeks, otherwise it will digest itself. There's so much gastric juices there, hydrochloric acid. So any food that you ate tonight for dinner, about three to four hours, it will break down into a cream-like liquid called chyme that's later moved into the small intestines. As we just reflected with the small intestines there, um, the nutrients are um, sent out into the bloodstream. Stomach. Just sensing in the upper left of the abdomen is your stomach being present. Be mindful, whatever it evokes, stomach. Of course, in our culture, there's a lot of personal things that we can get engaged with the stomach, the size, the shape. So being aware of anything that's coming up personally and to acknowledge it and also just the impersonal. This is just what the stomach does. Our personal is just all added onto this stomach.
sensing into the stomach. Gently withdrawing from stomach and we'll move into feces. The color, the normal color is brown, though when ill it can vary from yellow, green, or black. It can be hard, soft, tarry, or liquid. Its brown coloration comes from the combination of bile and bilirubin. It comes from dead red blood cells. The shape is like tubes of mud, the direction below the waist, location solid matter excreted through the rectum and anus, the border or the delimitation, the large colon and the anus. The definition, the word feces comes from the Latin meaning dregs. Feces are solid, solid particle combinations of food residue, bacteria and mucus. Human fecal matter varies significantly in appearance depending on diet and health. Normally it is semi-solid with a mucus coating. An average weight of a healthy adult is around six and a half ounces daily. 65% of feces is water and 35% dry matter. It's interesting to note is that feces contains 50% energy of the original food. This means that of all the food eaten, a significant amount goes back to feed our ecosystem. Many organisms feed on feces, from bacteria to fungi to insects, such as dung beetles, that can sense odors from a long distance. And so, you know, everyone has their own cup of tea. Like for us, we might smell some garlic and go, mmm, and for a dung beetle, smelling feces is wonderful to each their own. There are many colloquial terms for feces. I won't go into them, but I, we know there's many different terms. And also uh, when it relates to animals, the, there's different terms such as dung, scat, spores, droppings. Stool is a common term normally used in reference for human feces. And there's actually a study of scatology that helps scientists, anthropologists, and physicians by studying feces. You can tell where a person lived or visited, what type of diet they had. You also can detect ulcers, cancers, parasites, as well as bacterial infections. Feces or stool is used to diagnose bowel dysfunction. 
and provides vital information from a crime scene from the DNA within the cells of the feces. The function of feces, it is solid matter excreted through the anus, feces. And so yeah, so you've just heard kind of the impersonal, this is just what it is and does. And of course we may have our own personal relationship with this as well as we sit with feces being mindful of what it evokes. There's the physical, there's the personal, there's the impersonal, there's the mental, there's the emotional. Feces. Being present. So feces and whatever gets evoked, feces.
Now we'll gently withdraw to the brain. And I know it's kind of a jump from the feces to the brain. It's actually interesting that in uh, science these days, they speak about the digestive system as the second brain. And I may have mentioned to you before that there is a little bit of um, different interpretations on the number of parts of the body. There are some references of 31 parts, others of 32. And with my teacher, Templu Seto, he always taught it with the 32. And the discrepancy is that when there's 31, the brain is not in the list. And what's interesting is that the brain is considered part of bone marrow. And um, yeah, it's kind of interesting, like, you know, in between, in between the bones is marrow. So I can see why maybe an archaic understanding would be that the brain uh, is, like, is like part of bone marrow. It's this whole marrow stuff within the skull. But um, so some uh, texts will refer to 31 parts, others to 32. I don't think there's one that's earlier than the other. Uh, but I've always been taught by my Burmese teachers of the 32 parts, and um, so we use the brain separately, and it's housed next to feces. <laughs> so the brain's color is white and gray. Its shape is like a very soft melon. The direction above the waist, the location in the cranium, and it bordered the delimitation of the skull. The definition, the brain is the center of the nervous system. The brain is more complex than the most powerful computer and has over 100 billion nerve cells. The brain weighs three pounds with the consistency like soft tofu. Most neurons in the brain are firing five to 50 times a second. The brain is 2% of body weight, yet it uses 20 to 25% of the body's metabolic supplies. Even in deep sleep or coma, the brain is busy. It's like a refrigerator, it's always on. The function. The brain is composed of neurons consist consisting of gray and white matter. The brain is the command center sending impulses up to 170 miles per hour down the spinal column and has nerve endings throughout the body. That's why we can feel something even at the tip of the toe or wherever, the central nervous system. Studies have shown that the ways we intentionally shape our internal focus of attention in mindfulness meditation practice induces a state of brain activation during that practice. With repetition, an intentionally created state can become in time an enduring trait of the individual as reflected in long-term changes in brain function and structure. This is the fundamental property of neuroplasticity, how the brain changes in response to experience. That's why some neuroscientists say that neurons that fire together begin to wire together. So this is the heart of neuroplasticity, how we bring attention and through repetition we develop various traits, brain. So sensing into your skull in the middle of your head, brain. And just being mindful whatever it evokes. Personal parts are just understanding the impersonal, just the brain, this is just what it does. And it's powerful in the Dharma, it speaks about that the mind is the creator of our own heaven and hells through our own thoughts So the power of this mind. Brain.
brain. Whatever is present as you bring awareness into the brain. Acknowledging what's here, physically, mentally, emotionally, personally, impersonally, brain. gently withdrawing from the brain and just taking some moments just to acknowledge these parts that we've worked with tonight the large intestine small intestine stomach feces and brain and that these parts of course are connected to all of the different parts and systems within the body like any of these parts that we use in the 32 parts of the body, these are doorways into all of the other parts. Just acknowledging this body, this vehicle that we live inside of, this precious and fragile life. May we honor this body, this vehicle that we live inside of as a pathway to developing deeper wisdom and compassion. It's also very sobering, these practices of the body that helps to um, break some of the spell of enchantment. As mentioned, um, so much fuss, multi-billion dollar industry with these first five parts of head, hairs, body, hairs, nails, teeth, and skin, but now we're beginning to penetrate them and beginning to demystify them to some degree or break the spell of enchantment with those that, yeah, here is thin, flexible shafts of hardened cells protruding from the head, supporting our head to be warmer with thermal regulation, protection from ultraviolet light. This is what head hair is. The rest is an overlay. So there's the personal and the impersonal. 
But yes, the importance of honoring this body, yes, this vehicle that we live inside of as we awaken to see more clearly some of the narratives, some of the stories, some of the identifications that we've believed with our deep embedded conditioning as we sit with the body, with awareness. Perhaps we begin to understand more deeply the places where we get caught. Places that we're not seeing so clearly. Perhaps in time beginning to see through some of these stories and narratives, these conditionings. May all embodied beings find the gateways into their hearts and grow with greater awareness that leads to understanding, that leads to freedom and deep compassion, deep mercy for all beings, for this planet, for this universe. So this invitation as we come towards the closing of this practice to is for a few moments to let ourselves just take rest in the benevolence, these qualities of loving kindness. Wherever we're sitting upon or standing, relying, just letting what's beneath us hold us. A great benevolence with these parts of the body, allowing ourselves to rest in such benevolence of loving kindness, riding in some ease within our being and with all beings. This loving kindness is so boundless, it can even hold the whole universe. Letting the universe and all that's within it take rest in the heart of great loving kindness and wisdom. So for time, just resting in this heart of loving kindness and with this practice, just allowing yourself to be held. There's nothing you have to try to get or push away, just to receive, to be held in this great heart of loving kindness and wisdom. So may all beings be with peace.